Hello and welcome to Kedrick Farms. We're back with another episode of Edgewater, Saskatchewan, and today we are going to be doing something a little bit unconventional. This is probably not very common up in the area, but we've decided to try and go organic for a couple of reasons. One is we're starting to run pretty low on money and buying a ton of herbicide is going to cost us a pretty penny. Herbicide is not cheap. And the second is, well, I just wanted to give this uh, Borgo a try. This is uh, set up as a weeder in-game, and I'm not entirely uh, sure how this is going to work out. I have honestly don't think I've ever used one of these, but it's a pretty big implement. In fact, there's a bigger version of this that you can get. But I wanted to give this smaller one a try mostly because our fields really aren't that big, especially this one. And as you can see here, we're in the first stage of growth after planting. And we've got uh, a little bit of weeds coming up here. So see, it says weed small. So we can run through this with a weeder and hopefully take care of all of these weeds without having to apply any chemical, which should actually raise our environmental score a little bit with precision farming. So let's go ahead and dive out here and uh, as you can see we're not destroying any of the crops because we're still in that first growth stage and so things are in theory uh still resilient enough to handle getting uh, driven over a little bit in real life obviously we'd uh, be doing a little bit of damage but you'd probably still be getting out here to do something uh, most farmers, especially with canola, you'd probably just be spraying on top. But we're going to be mixing things up a little bit here. Uh, part of Farm Sim is being able to try out new equipment. And I do like to play realistically and within you know, certain uh, guardrails. And there are farmers up there trying to do uh, organic crops. So we're going to give it a shot. I think realistically, if I had cotton, maybe our peas or our lentils at an earlier stage, we probably could have run this through on them. Uh, I think that those are crops that you'd be more inclined to see an organic grow on. But you know what? This is kind of fun. And yeah, this machine is huge. So I'm glad we didn't get the bigger one. I think I would have just had a really hard time trying to handle all of the curves and stuff in this field if I'd had an even bigger implement. I will say it seems to be pulling all right. I don't know what the max speed on this implement was supposed to be, but we're hitting it at seven miles an hour here, which seems to be doing pretty good. I don't think I would want to go a whole lot faster with an implement this wide. Yep, seven miles an hour is our maximum speed, so we are in a sufficient power position. We're doing all the right things. Uh, I have made the shift to manual gears over the last few days in all of my series. We probably talked about this on uh, the previous episode, and so I'm still getting used to that a little bit. Occasionally I forget to pop into the correct gear, and notice that I'm going a lot slower than I should be, but we seem to be in a good spot here. And this field isn't going to take no time at all. Uh, we'll probably end up making one more pass around in a headland fashion here just to give us a lot of room on uh, implement this wide I'm gonna need a lot of room to Kind of turn around and avoid some of these trees and bushes around the outside of the field I think I'm not bothering to set up a GPS track here on this path because well, quite honestly, if I overlap a foot or two with an implement this wide, it's still not going to matter. We're going to probably take about the same amount of passes around this field. So the trick here is to turn early enough so that I don't put this thing into that telephone pole or any of these trees. Oh, we just made it. Look at that. We're starting to get the hang of uh, some of these bigger implements and the articulated steering vehicles here. Not quite a pro yet, but... Any round I can uh, manage not to smack into a tree is a good one. And you can pretty much see we don't have uh, any weeds in this area. It's hard to see where you've actually run the uh, weeder through here. But I'm going to just assume if there's no weeds, it means I hit that area. There's actually not that many weeds in this field as a whole, which is one of the other reasons I really didn't want to have to run a sprayer through here is just it would have been a waste of a lot of product because we don't have 
a more modern sprayer setup that's uh, able to use the per nozzle shutoff like precision farming uh, has added to the game. I really need to find ourselves a good sprayer that also is precision farming capable or just go through the work to add it myself. It's not that hard to do. It just takes a little bit of time, especially with these bigger sprayers, to go in and set up all the different sections appropriately. Uh, but I probably need to just jump back into that uh, stuff and get that done on a few of our standard mods that we've started using across saves. Uh, this Best Way sprayer has definitely been one of the better pull-behind sprayer mods that we've had. And I think it's probably due for a precision farming update here soon. All right, I'm going to get this little bit up here that we've got, this curvy bits. With, uh, I can see just a little clump of weeds up through here. And then I think we've just got one more round on the up-down rows to knock out it here. So I'm going to try and get spun around here. Looks like two rounds, uh, two times around the field, and then one round in the middle here, and we're going to be all done. And the price to lease this thing was not that expensive. It was less than $5,000 to lease this thing uh, for the day. And a container of herbicide would have cost me, I want to say, 2400 So if I'd gotten two more things of, tw of uh, herbicide to spray this field and the other field, which I think I would have needed uh, at least that much, we're at the same price as leasing this piece of equipment. So... From a financial perspective, this should work out uh, pretty well. Uh, if not break even, we, we should be even better. And especially when you add in the environmental bonus we should be seeing from precision farming for uh, doing less spraying on our fields. I think uh, these two fields are pretty decent size. And so it should bump our overall score up here a bit. But uh, we'll take a look at that here in a minute. If we come in here and just take a look, weed control is kind of in the middle, but not too bad. I do wish I could see my environmental scores on a per field basis. That would be nice. But uh, right now we're getting a 3% bonus to our sell prices. I'd love to see this nitrogen score come up. And that's one of the reasons why I went ahead and applied nitrogen on some of our fields, even though they weren't fields that needed nitrogen just to get our overall uh, numbers up on the uh, precision farming map. It's a little bit odd how that works. I think when we go to harvest at the end of uh, this year, we'll see our overall scores start to balance out as well, uh, especially because those nitrogen levels are gonna be coming up on several of our fields. And the big field that we've got that has just terrible nitrogen on it is this uh, field, well, both of these two fields that already had crops on them when we bought them. And so that's unfortunate. Not a lot we're going to be able to do for those until after harvest. Uh, but these two fields should work out pretty good. And we're going to jump over here into the next field. Now, this field, the weeds grew in a little bit thicker, which is telling me that I need a hoe. Uh, in order to do the weeds, but I suspect I'm going to be able to get at least some of these. They're not all huge weeds, but it does see, say weed medium hoe. These don't look as big. These look smaller. Oh, these are weed partial. I bet you I'm going to be able to knock out some of the weeds with the weeder here, and it'll probably leave a few behind that are the medium size. So let's... Uh, get over here and see uh, it doesn't look like I'm knocking out oh yep yeah, some of those weeds just went away so let's uh let's see here I'm definitely knocking out weeds uh, there's a few getting left behind though well I think it's still better to continue running through with the mechanical weeder here rather than uh, jumping over into herbicide I think we're gonna stick with this and yeah, we'll have a few weeds here and there, but it's not going to be nearly as bad as it was. And that should hopefully give us a balance with our environmental score here in precision farming. Um, it's interesting, like, I suppose I could have ran through with the mechanical weeder before the seeds sprouted and the crops grew up. I was just trying to be a little bit uh, more realistic 
I know in real life from what research I've done, you would typically wait until the crops were of a certain size uh, to hit them with the mechanical weeder so that you're not uh, knocking the seeds out and stuff like that, depending on how deep those are and a lot of other factors. But I'd always seen that you wait until they kind of take hold to hit them with the weeder. But maybe I'm just doing it wrong here. I don't know. Uh, I did look up some information sus sus specific to Saskatchewan in general, and it seemed like uh, the farmers that are using the more organic methodology were waiting until the crops had uh, actually come up and were a certain size before hitting them with the mechanical weeder. Either way, it is farm sim and we're where we're at, so I think we're just going to accept our fate here and uh, keep trucking with this thing. I'm uh, not overly dissatisfied with uh, the amount of weeds that we're getting out of the field here. This field certainly took a little bit longer than the other field did, uh, so now I'm starting to feel the draw to that uh, slightly wider implement, adding another, I think it was another 20 feet onto this. I think this is 170 maybe, and the other one would have been 190. Ah, I, might, I could get behind that maybe. So we're uh, done here, I believe. I'm just going to drop it back down. There might be a couple of stragglers in this section, but... As you can see, we didn't do maybe as good of a job as I would have liked. There's still quite a few of the more medium-sized weeds out here. 
that we didn't end up getting, but we did knock out a lot of the weeds. So I'm going to take that as a win, and I think we're just going to roll with this uh, since we have uh, spent so much time on it. And I really don't want to have to now double up and put a chemical out here as well. At least our other field we were able to fully hit before the weeds got too bad. I'm really kind of curious just what uh, caused the weeds to grow so much faster in this field than the other field. Um, I don't know. It's uh, it's interesting how some of these mechanics work. I guess in real life, uh, the weeds would be a bit unpredictable as well. But we went from having nothing visible into the field straight to medium weeds overnight. So I was kind of expecting the weeds to show up as smaller weeds as an in-between stage. I was checking each day as we fast forwarded time. Eh, it just didn't work out that way. We are now all officially done with all of the, I guess, summer activities here on the farm. We sold off all of our grains over the uh, winter months here. So all three of these silos should be empty. And that means that next episode, we're going to be moving time forward and jumping into a harvest of some kind. I can't wait. And that's all for today. Ketterk out. But... We're going to mix things up here a little bit. Oh, we caught the tree. <laughs>